Welcome to another Between the Lanes how-to video and this is Ron Hirschman from Between the Lanes and tonight uh, we're gonna assemble a flexi car chassis um, I'm gonna show you how to prep it for racing as far as uh, installing the oil lights, soldering them in place um, attaching the bat pan uh, taping it up, installing the guide flag on the chassis, lead wires, and uh, we'll get started. Before we get started though, some of the tools we're going to use, uh, hot soldering iron, solder, acid flux, paste flux, oil, got a screwdriver, an exacto, pair of tweezers, and just some other assorted items, uh, set of digital calipers. So well, let's get started. So we've taken the chassis and, and we've already checked it to make sure it's fairly flat. Uh, different chassis out of, the, out of the package might require a little tweaking, twisting, bending to get them to sit fairly flat on your tech block. Make sure you got a nice flat tech block. Uh, Corian, uh, slate, those type of blocks. So anything out of wood or anything like that's not good for doing chassis work on. So there's two ways of <clears throat> doing your rear end in your car as far as the oil lights. Um, you can either do them like I'm going to do in this first example or you can use a chassis jig. Uh, chassis jigs are not the cheapest way to go. I mean you can you're going to spend 50 bucks and up on a good chassis jig to be able to do um, put your oil lights in and, and everything but there's old school way and there's the jig way so with the Mazzetti cars here lately I've been finding that they're pretty good as far as uh, the rear ends go as far as not having to to open up the holes in the chassis for the oil lights to be moved around to get the car either square or uh, get your rear end in straight this way. So I use jig wheels. Um, what I use for jig wheels, I don't use jig wheels per se um, as a machined aluminum thing. I use uh, uh, spur gears and normally what I use is I, is I use a 44 tooth 72 pitch uh, spur gear because if I ever run 72 pitch gears um, the largest gear I would ever run and I think the largest they make in 72 pitch is a 44 tooth so that's what I use for my jig wheels because that way if you ever have to tech the car and you've got the big gear on there the gear will clear as well if you jig with a smaller gear and then you put on a larger gear your gear will hang below the chassis and that may not uh, pass at tech and you'll either have to put bigger tires on your car, which is going to make your car handle a little bit worse and resulting in slower lap times. So I always use the biggest gear. And, and on the Mazzetti chassis especially, um, when, I, when I use this and set it up this way, uh, 750 tires on the car, um, no matter what size gear, whether it be 72 pitch, 64 pitch, um, my gear will clear as, as the chassis will. Um, when we run other races that USRA, FNRS that allow for 47 thousandths clearance, I grind the tires down to 730 and everything clears, the chassis and the gear. So in this, what we do here is, is we take a set of digital calipers and we come in and we go down on the axle. I've got 351 there. I've got 351 on that side. So 351, 351 is what you want. Um, you want them to be the same. That's preferable. I think if you're 351 and 350 to try and grind and get a thousandths out of there, uh, that's a lot of work. But the way this is, you know, chassis is on the flat, gears are flat. Um, I don't have any back and forth movement in oil lights. They fit in the chassis holes really nice and tight. So now we're going to solder them in place. But before we do that, we want to add some oil. 
to the axle and the oil light. Acid flux on both sides. Hot iron, solder, and you want to heat that up and just let that hold on there. And you'll, you'll watch the solder actually flow around the oil light and flow into the chassis holes to, to help. I've already done that. So um, that, that just makes sure that they lock in there really nice. You get solder all the way through there. It fills up all the nooks and crannies. And this one didn't flow so nice, so we're just going to add a little more flux. Put that heat back on there. And let that flow in there. Let that cool down. So we've got our oil light soldered in, and if you can, I don't know if you can really see how it it flows around there. Now, when I wash this chassis here, I, that'll clean some of that ugliness up, and we'll show you that here in a few minutes. But that's doing it the old school way. Now, any other chassis, if you're doing it this way, you can get a piece of graph paper, which is a piece of white paper with lined boxes. You can lay the chassis down on the graph paper, and you can check, you know, put center here, and check and make sure you're in square to the front of the chassis and the, and the guide tongue holder. So that's doing that that way. I've already got this one jigged up. So, 44 tooth gears in the back. We've got a lock down in front, in the middle. Pins hold the axle in place. Oh, you got to do that oil first. Flex them up real nice. Let it cool for a couple of seconds. Inspect your joint, make sure your solder's float all the way down. This side hasn't, so I'm gonna put a little here. And add just a little bit of solder. Got that to flow down in there. Okay, and that's done. So we're going to go off and wash these parts, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, and we've washed up the chassis. You always got to wash your chassis after you put the oil lights and stuff in, just because acid flux is pretty corrosive. If you don't get it right off, it's going to start spotting and staining the chassis not look very good so now some guys run motor or not motor braces but axle braces or an upright brace upright brace would be a piece of piano wire shaped in a u that would run along the bottom of the chassis up to the back of the oil light you solder that in. If, if you want to do that 
after you solder your lights in, then you want to put that in and then clean everything up. But I have found that with the Mazzetti cars, being they're pretty strong cars, I've had no need to run the rear upright brace. Now, other chassis, yeah, you probably want to run that upright brace just, just for that extra strength. And uh, they run some softer materials and some of the other chassis. So the Mazzetti's made out of stainless steel. It's pretty tough material. And um, I just haven't went for that option of running that brace. Again, I haven't needed, the, needed it. And secondly, I don't really want that extra weight in the back of the car. Now, if the, if the car is fragile, then I'll, I'll put that extra weight on there by putting that brace in there. But I don't need that with the Mazzetti. So here we've got the, the chassis. And our next step, or the next step I do, is, is I take an axle. Uh, axles, I use, um, I use real drill blank number 42 uh, dr axles that I get. I get them from McMaster Car, but you can get them from McMaster Car, you can get them from Granger, um, any, any kind of good industrial tool house. But this is a good time too, after you've washed everything out, you put the axle in with the gear and and it should spin really super free like, like this is spinning. Um, if it's not spinning and it's bound up, then you need, you've got an oil light that's not seated in there right or it's not in there right. But as you can see, both of these, how nice they, they spin. And, and that's, that's not doing anything uh, to the oil lights whatsoever. That's just putting them right in the chassis and going from there. Now, while we're talking about the oil lights and spinning, uh, there's 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 a couple types of oil lights out there, um, Parma, JK, etc. They sell what's called a centered oil light bushing, which is is a powder pressed into a die. Oil's in there. They come out of the die. They go through an oven. Uh, the heat basically keeps the the powder from crumbling apart. Your second op option bushing would be a slick seven machine type bushing, which is, is machined from a harder piece of bronze or, uh, I don't know exactly, I mean, it's, it's definitely got bronze and I don't know what all's in that material, but <clears throat> with Slick 7 bushings, um, they fit nice and tight and everything as far as the axle goes, but you have to keep them oiled every heat because if you seize one of those up, um, you may have to cut the axle in two to get it out of your car. I do not use Slick 7 bushings. Um, I, I've, I've tried them in the past. Um, it's just, it's just uh, one less thing to worry about in the heat of battle um, using those bushings in regards to making sure they're oiled every heat. Um, I've seen guys that have had them seize up. I don't know if that's because they forgot to oil them one heat or they went a few heats without oiling them, but it's just not, the it's just not worth the aggravation to me to use those oil lights. I've seen other guys use them with pretty good success, but, you know, that's... Uh, it's your choice, and I, I just go for the centered uh, bushing. So we're going to put the pan on, but before we put the pan on, and I'm sorry I don't have the number, but on the Mazzetti cars, the the, uh, the pan at the rear here, and it's not sitting in there right, but they come with a, with a stainless steel tube that connects the, the center section to the bat pan or to the pan and there's just basically two body pins or two straight pins that, that slide out that uh, keeps that in the chassis. So in the early days of guys running Mazzetti's we've seen a lot of these pins work out of the tube, the tube comes out of the car, the pan gets cocked on the chassis etc. So um, I had started off when I had the car together, just putting a piece of tape. Now this will probably be a better way to show you, but imagine the pan's on there, but tube goes through there like so. I would put a piece of tape on here to keep the tube from moving around and, and beating up against the stop in the pan and knocking the head out, which would then, the pin would come out on one side and the tube might come out. So. On the Mazzetti's, there's two chassis. There's there's the Defender, which that's what we're putting together as a Defender, and then there's the older Patriot. The Patriot chassis 
had a lot more movement side to side and back and forth than the defenders do. And I'll show you an example here in a minute, um, but it's taped up so you really, probably won't see much difference. But anyway, the Patriots were just had a lot, lot more chances of that tube working its way out. So other than taping the top, I thought, well, how can I keep this, really lock it in good and hard? Well, I have this 3M tape, which is a double-sided foam tape. It's like a, it's like a frame tape. Um, you can find it at hardware stores, Lowe's, Home Depot, even Walmart. And um, it's a 3M product. It's, it's really good and sticky. And what I do is I, I put a piece of this down in here like so. Well, before we do that, we're going to going to cut some of this off because we don't need it to be that wide so cut this like so and then we're going to lay this down in here like so and then we're going to come back cut that lay that in there press that down real good Do this one. Okay, so we've got that in place like that. So now we're going to take our X Acto, pull that off. And we're going to put our pan on this. So now we got the pan in place. So we're now going to take and put the tube in. Come from this side. And this is where my screwdriver kind of comes in handy. Gotta get them them lined up, and that'll then just push through there. But now it's, this one's being a little stubborn on me, but we'll get it. Now, part of the problem is it wants to stick to the tape before you get it through there, so. Well, let's do this. Let's just try the other one. Sometimes they go through really quick and easy. And other times you got to kind of fight with them. So we got to put two chassis together. So As you can see, we tried to peel the tape up. So then we'll flip to the other side. There, we got it in place. So, we got that through. Then we'll take our body pin and we'll put a pretty good bend in it. We'll put this in like so. And I always look to center them up and make sure that when I've got that centered up like, you can't probably not see it, but I just try and center everything up. Then we take a piece 
of 898 strapping tape. Same stuff I used in the body armor <clears throat> body armor video. Put that on there like so. Press it down along the top and I take my screwdriver. down like so and we've got her locked in so basically that got a little bit back and forth movement not so much uh, front to back because that's just the way this the newer defenders are designed but we take that out of there so with that tape in place if a pin if a pin comes out that tube's not going anywhere. It's staying in the car and it's staying right where it's at. So that locks that in. Now another option, if your rules would allow it, a lot of rules don't, you can replace this tube with a piece of piano wire and you can solder it. You can, uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can put it in and solder it here on the inside uprights or you can put keepers on the outside let it float a little bit. But uh, like I said, most places don't allow you to do that, so I'm just using all the parts that come with this, with the chassis and stuff. This is the way we're doing it. So, and prior to all this, of course, I put the pin tubes in, and this is a this is a plated uh, aluminum pan. Um, again, previous video we showed you how to epoxy them in for the anodized pans. On the nickel plated pans, you don't need to. Uh, don't need to do that. You just solder the tubes in, and I've trimmed them in the back already. I've left this up front. So now we've got the pan in place. So usually what I do next is I will go ahead and I will put the uh, I'll put the motor in. Now I uh, because everywhere I race now I use 64 pitch gears, but same same thing applies with. 72 pitch. You want to take the smallest spur gear size that you're going to run. And 35 is about as small as I go with 64 pitch. I know there's some 34 tooths out there and everything, but I go with 35. And we put that in like that. And of course, our motor we're going to go ahead and put in. Now, before we do this, we want to pre 10 the motor tab here so we a little bit of acid flux solder that up like so and you can just dry wipe off any acid flux it's also a good time to go ahead and flux up the back here because if we put the motor in we got to put the, the the motor brace in the back so I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick Pretend this. I just do the whole area. Want that cool? Again, dry wipe it. Get that acid flux off of there. And put the axle back in. Now I'll be doing a different. I'm going to do a separate video here in the future of of setting gear meshes and and putting. Uh, your your motors in and etc. But you get a little sneak peek today. So I prefer to run straight cut spur gears and angled pinions. And the reason for that is I've never seen any difference between a straight spur and an angled pinion versus a straight pinion and an angled spur. Uh, what I do notice, and I'll show you here in a second. Uh, what we want to do is we we'll Get that motor in the correct angle and I gotta take a look and you want it you want to make sure you're not the back of the motor is not hitting the axle so put a little bit lash in there and you gotta I know this might be out of the view of the camera I'm trying to do my best here but I got a good grip on the motor I've also pre tended my motor we'll come in here and we're gonna tack 
Basically, we're just going to tack solder that in place. And I didn't do that, so let's do it again. All right, we're tacked in there. So, we've got the motor in. And it's, like I said, it's just tack soldered in there. So, we got the motor in. Now we're going to put the rear brace in. So, before I put the brace in, the reason I like to run the straight spurs, angle pinion, if you lose a gear in a race, and uh, you got to change your gear with a with a straight gear angled pinion that'll come right out like that and I, I can't really right now show you I don't have a, I should have had a uh, well that's that'll be in the other video but if that was a, if that was an angled spur gear straight pinion I would have never been able to push that out like that or get that off in, in, in order to quickly change it so, take this out. Now we're going to put the rear motor brace in. So, the motor brace goes in at an angle, and that angle has to be with the, with the motor. So, this is where my tweezers kind of come in handy a little bit, because that's going to pull up there against the motor. So, what you want to do... is you want to get that brace and I need to come over this way just a little bit a little bit more you want to get that brace so it's same angle as the motor so more acid flux And you can also pre-tin your motor brace. I didn't pre-tin this one, but it'll just make this go quicker. So what we do is we just heat this up. And I just do one side. And then I'll come in here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to solder this or just tack it to the motor just to keep this brace in place while I finish soldering the brace to the chassis. Now, you gotta let that cool. It might take a close to a minute or so to really cool down. And our motor is now soldered in. Now, the reason that I did a 35, 35 is when I put the bigger gear on, which I usually run a 37. It all has to do and it all has to do with position of the motor brace to the motor. Now if I had set this up with a 37, bigger gear, motor more forward, and then wanted to run a 35 with this brace soldered up against the motor, I could not get the gear mesh because this would not let the motor go far enough back with the smaller spur gear. So we're going to have 37. It doesn't matter if you go from, from a from a 35 to a 36 or a 37 or 38, you're going to be moving the motor forward and your gap, you're going to have a little bit more gap in between the motor and the brace, but that's okay because you can fill it up with solder. 
but you're going to be able to get your gear mesh. So this is a 37 tooth, and we're going to solder this in. After I get my mesh in. And I'm going to show you. Now you can see the difference in the gap. I don't know how well you can see it, but now there's a gap there because we've moved the motor forward away from the brace. So that, like I said, start with us the smallest spur gear to solder your brace in. Then when you, if you go bigger, you, you'll have your gear mesh because if, if you had done this with a 37 and had that up against the motor and then went to a 35, you could never get the motor back to get your gear mesh. So, basically you just, again, a little bit of flex there. Get you a pretty good sized ball of solder on your iron. And you fill in the gap with solder. And then, once you've figured out what you're going to do for gearing at the racetrack on a particular day, you got to come back and re-solder this, and you want to fill this all the way in with solder along with that, and you shouldn't lose your motor in a crash. All right, so we've got this in. Got, got a nice gear mesh, nice and free, a little backlash in there. Just a little bit of, a little, you got to have a little bit of side slop in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you got to have a little bit of that in there. So... <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and take the motor back out because I want to show you how to put the brace in. So I'm going to take the motor out because now we're going to put the guide flag in, put the guide flag on the car. So take this out. And another, another little hint, too, I should have done this and I didn't, is you can, uh, when you're doing the oil lights and, and before you go wash the chassis, you can also pre-tin this and pre-tin that. Then go wash everything up and get rid of the flux, too, and then you don't have to use the dry rag. But All right, so guide flag. Now, I've already got my guide flag threaded, prepped, and... Um, on Mazzetti cars, chassis, I always start with ten thousandths spacers in the uh, in between the guide and the chassis. So I'll be right back in a second. All right, so we got ten thousand 